Hello, Tom Levecki here with the latest edition of the Armchair MBA. Today, we're going to do something a little different. Um, we're going to be covering the top 10 business lessons from the Mafia, La Cosa Nostra. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, if you like this video, please hit the thumbs up. And if you want to contribute to the channel, feel free to hit the thanks and contribute so we can make more great videos. So the Armchair MBA is about the cross-section of business and organized crime and try to unpack and learn lessons as such. So we'll be reviewing the top 10 business lessons of the mafia. Okay, so number one, always honor your agreements no matter how small they may seem. So we know this uh, in business, you get screwed every day um, or people try to screw you every day in business, especially as an entrepreneur, people are trying to overbill you, people trying to take money from you, uh, and the like, and I'm not a street guy, but more than likely happens if not every day in the street, if not worse than in the business world. So the whole idea of being honorable becomes an asset in itself. And a good example of that I believe was Carlo Gambino. Carlo Gambino, although it was a sly fox, um, always gave his word. And that's how we kind of rose up through the ranks by being honorable. And by being honorable in this environment nowadays, actually is becoming an asset. So always be honorable in your agreements, no matter how small they are. That's what people will always remember. Number two, lessons from the mafia. Know when it's time to make a move and take action confidently and quickly and decisively. Um, the Indragra was a group of kidnappers, kind of considered to be farmers. Um, took that money, double, triple, quadruple down on the cocaine opportunity. Stayed away from Babania, stayed away from wings they felt that uh, unfortunately many of those people die and they were lower income people so they took the opportunity to seize the cocaine market in the u.s and now are becoming a 50 billion dollar a year powerhouse so rule number two uh, lessons and learn from the mafia know when it's time to make a move and quickly take action number three educate yourself on the latest trends in your industry so you can stay ahead of the competition um, for those who have not read about it i highly recommend look up the eco mafia in Sicily. So the mafia was running out of uh, drug money, or they're still involved with drugs, but not as much as they were. So they seized the opportunity to, through government grants to build up wind farms. They already owned the land. They bought the propellers, got government contracts, and then built what is known as the eco mafia. Billions and billions of dollars are fueled, uh, are fuel alternative energy, and wind farms is one of them. So the Sicilian cause in Austria, although people think it's down and out, people think it's not as strong as what it was, um, there were a few players that made billions off of monopolizing the wind energy industry. They saw the trend, acted, and capitalized on it. Same goes for business. Think long-term, number four. Think long-term by building loyalty through relationships, partners, et cetera. Uh, even if it means sacrificing short-term for the long-term. Uh, for example, when the Inzarellos, Iscarpati, they were called, the runaways, left Sicily, they connected with the Gambino family for refuge. Um, they got their um, their loyalty was with their cousins. They took care of them. Um, they weathered a storm until Tadina died. They were able to come back and negotiate. And now, as I understand to be the ruling power in uh, Palermo and in Sicily. So once you take an L, once you take a defeat, you need to think of a long-term strategy, uh, long-term loyalty with people that are, um, whether they're related to you, whether you have uh, um, something in common, whatever that is. So the Inzarellos sought refuge from the cousins in the Gambino family. Uh, Paul Castellano sent over John Gambino to broker a peace. Um, they did have to kill two, two Inzarellos on this side of the pond, but nevertheless, uh, they had a long-term strategy through loyalty and relationships, and then we're able to kind of reinstate their power over time with patience. Same thing happens in business. You take an L, regroup, go through loyal, loyal relationships, and then strike when the timing is right. Always maintain an air of mystery. Never give up too much detail or information. Always to those who don't need or aren't trusted enough to handle correctly. In other words, keep your circle small. Uh, Carlo Gambino, is, I'm going to talk a lot about him, these 10 rules, is kept a very super tight knit circle, minimal access, talked very little, was always listening, and, and hence was an enigma. 
to law enforcement and why he died in his bed, in my opinion, and why he had such a long reign. Number six, although you're going to keep your tight circle tight, you also have to make sure you have a strong team around you for support, both emotionally and professionally when tackling difficult tasks or situations that require multiple uh, perspectives. Um, your right-hand person and your left-hand person are even more important than the talent yourself. Always keep smarter people around you, um, and you need a strong team around you. Otherwise, you're not going to scale and kind of reach your business, personal, social endeavors, whatever they are. The Philly crew, as we know, um, as far as I know, and that core crew, Molino and those guys, have not had any informants over the 30 years these guys have been together. Um, and then allegedly the numbers for the Philly mob as a result are even higher now than the Scarfro era. Um, I would ask Scott Bernstein about that. He seems to be the expert on Philly or George Anastasia. But nevertheless, um, you need a strong team around you. And Joe and Melina and those guys are very loyal to each other. They have a strong team together, haven't gotten jammed up in any super serious indictments. I know recently there was uh, some, but only five, six years, which in that world is not a big deal. Hopefully they made enough money to justify it. But nevertheless, this works in business as well. Assemble a strong team around you. Number seven. Okay, so Italians, for those Italians, Italian-Americans know, uh, we're a very frugal lot for the most part. Uh, so don't spend unnecessarily. Make sure you set financial goals so you have a goal. And when uh, while you're still uh, making sure not to skimp on essential services, products you need for growth, right? So what you want to look at is you want to say, okay, um, um, I'll spend money, but only in things that make me money and be frugal on the things that don't, right? You have your own personal PL, make sure you save some money every month, but the same goes for business as life on the street. Uh, back to Andragada, although there was big money in kidnapping, big money in kidnapping back then, like hundreds of thousand dollars per sequester, as they call it. Um, they kept the proceeds and went all in on cocaine. Credit is not given, but earned in international narcotic trafficking. Trafficking. So essentially, in the beginning, they did a lot of kidnappings, took that money, which was a lot amongst 150 clans, went to South America, places like Peru, Ecuador, and of course, uh, Colombia, and then also formed some ties in, um, in uh, Mexico. They were able to front cash at first, build up credit, and now we're able to do on consignment. I'm actually going to do a um, a show on how they pay the cartels in certain cryptocurrencies. I've been doing some analysis on, which I find extremely interesting. But what I'm saying is build up a war chest. Cash is king. Don't spend unnecessarily. Make sure you have some financial goals and you meet and exceed them. And then as importantly, uh, only put money out that you're going to see a return. Number eight. Pay attention, observe closely, and listen carefully between before taking any action. This way, you have un, of all the unnecessary, all the necessary information, needing decision at hand before committing anything irrevocable into motion. Perfect example: the chin. Although um, uh, Castellano was killed in December of 1985, I think December 16th, I believe. Chin Lucchese's got the revenge in April 13th, 1986. They waited for a while. They got their ducks in a row. They wanted to find a way to strike. They misguided that day. They got the Chico, which I think was a big hit. I don't think anybody would argue that in terms of uh, hurting the power of Gotti's base because Frank, uh, Frankie the Chico had a strong base, had a strong followership, was a strong leader. And they just pretty much said, Chin said, you know what, let me see what's going on. Let me unpack this. Let me sit back. Let me get all the information I need and then strike. And if you notice, Bobby Brello was hit five years later. I was once told by an old Sicilian guy that La Mafia knows the score the, the Mafia never, for, uh, my score the, uh, the Mafia never forgets. Um, and that they actually have a tradition. If they, there's a vendetta for your family, or if there's a hit, they actually wait. I, I was told six years, but maybe it's five years. And if you notice, a Bobby Borriello hit was five years later to the day, pretty much from the same camp, Chin and Lucchese's. So it goes to tell you that the mafia never forgets, but you got to be the same way in business. You got to pay attention, observe, and strike when needed, but only have all the information before. Otherwise, um, you could jam yourself up. Number nine, practice patience as much as possible. Rome was not built in a day, so neither should any lasting enterprise. Um, it's kind of like going back to the same Cosa Nostra on this one. 
Um, although they kind of lost a lot of the heroin market over these last few years, especially after the Beats connection. After the fall of the French connection, the Sicilian uh, Costa Nostra cornered the heroin market and then over time uh, made billions of dollars. Totodin and Colinesi stamped out the competition, pretty much killing all of their rivals to take over. But after they took over, they put billions into construction in Palermo and made it a Renaissance city. Um, I was there um, in the early 2000s, and you literally saw no less than 50 cranes putting up buildings. Allegedly, a lot of that was built off of drug money from Cosa Nostra. So you got to be patient. They were patient. They were kind of hanging out saying, okay, we have the French connection. We got our people in Marseille, then took over uh, the poppy seed um, um, processing from Afghanistan, from Turkey and other areas, and then took that money and put it into construction in Palermo, making Totorina, Bernardo Provenzano, Matteo Maser de Nero, and many others uh, into billionaires. Keep your competitive edge sharpened by staying one step ahead of opponents with proactive strategies rather than reactive. Um, and a good example of this, this is an easy one, of the Genovese and the Detroit families perfected the front or street ball strategy by keeping the true power hidden from the FBI, which allowed their leaders to stay in place for much longer. Chin had a very long run, um, I think probably 20-something years, which is very long uh, for a Don of that era. Pretty much done for any era, if you really look at it and examine. Um, so you need a strategy in place to stay ahead of your opponents, which in this case is the FBI. And even the Detroit families uh, operated this the same way um, and found it very, very uh, efficacious, if you will, to have this fr uh, front boss, Tony Salerno or whoever, to keep the true power uh, base viable. So these are the 10 business lessons uh, ruled uh, or put together uh, that you can learn from for your career, for your business, uh, from the mafia, from the Cosa Nostra. And for those that are into technology, this was done with ChatGPT. Have a good, have a good day, guys and gals. And I'll see you on the next episode of the Armchair MBA.